Our next presentation is on our technical tour. Presenting will be J.B. McCarthy with the uh, Vermont Department of Transportation. Coochie Gorge Bridge is located, uh, it's about an hour and 45 minutes or so, right down I-89 here. If you're going home and you drove up, going south, it's like three miles off the, uh, the interstate at exit one on 89. Crosses the, uh, goes across the uh, Ottaquiche River. It's uh, 160 feet down to the ledge below. Uh, Wayne Simmons talked about the bridge the other day. It's a bridge that we want to keep in service uh, forever, if possible. We're kind of going to the limit here on this project we have going on here right now as to what we want to do with it as far as load capacity. So I think when we get to the point of adding another lane someday, it'll be an interesting design. Every rivet we touch on here, we need to speak with the uh, Division for Historic Preservation. So they keep a pretty good eye on us here on all our projects, but especially this one. So. So here's the view from the top, looking down. This bridge was, uh, it was constructed in 1911 and in 19, as a railroad bridge. And in 1935 or so, it was turned into a highway bridge. And they just put on some short brush curbs and put a rail on. Um, it's always been a, a site for uh, people want to go uh, visit to get the view. There's a state park. You can walk along the ridge, along the gorge, all the way down to the top of that picture and um, get down to the, to the water if you want. But that sidewalk's only about three and a half feet wide. So when in the middle of summer, and especially in the fall, the hillsides on both sides turn all sorts of colors and that sidewalk is just jammed. Our district people put up that little fence that you can see um, on the face of curb there to the left of that individual. Because uh, people were stepping back to take a picture of their, their friends of the gorge in the background. And this is actually a high accident location because cars would have to stop and then they'd get hit in the rear and that type of thing. So it's kind of, it needs to be expanded, the sidewalk does. It's a three span uh, steel deck arch. So it has, a, the main span is about 188 feet and it has two approach spans coming in. I think one's 50, one's 40. Uh, as I said, it's constructed in 1911 as a railroad bridge, converted to a highway bridge in the 30s. In 1972, um, the agency went in and expanded the floor beams and put some bolted plates on there to put a more of a sidewalk out there. And it's that one we just showed with that individual. Um, so, but still, it's only four feet, four feet wide. So, and it's even less now that we put that barrier up on the face of curb. In 88, we went out to do um, just some deck patching in the middle section because the outside sections were replaced. Once they got the pavement off, like it always happens, the concrete was rather soft, so I decided to replace the whole thing. So the deck on there is really in pretty good shape. I'm not sure when the last time that steel was painted. The project we're working on here is, is going to repaint the whole thing. But unfortunately, the bridge has always been used as a means for to commit suicide, unfortunately. And in um, 2018, in the first two months, we had four suicides. I think it's on the map around the Northeast as a place to come. So, and it puts a strain on everybody, not just the family of the people do that, but the, the emergency services people out of the town of Hartford have to go out there and they have equipment to get down there. Um, and it's just a, it just gets to be too much. And to be honest with you, I can't believe it's taken us this long to put something up. So we went in um, last summer. Well, the bridge is in pretty good shape, as you can see from the bridge inspection numbers there. The superstructure does need some work and we're gonna address that, but. There's just a schematic of the bridge. The bridge um, that's out there today um, in, the, in the width, it's, it's 30 feet curb to curb, four 11 and four typicals, and that's gonna remain the same. The only thing we're gonna do is, is widen the sidewalks. And you can see where we added on the uh, extensions to the floor beams back in 72. So the goals of this project is just to rehabilitate the, the whole thing, do all we can on every, every element that's out there, and provide two basic uh, safety improvements to widen the sidewalk and add a permanent safety fence. Um, we went out this uh, uh, last year and put up a, a temporary fence. I noticed in New Hampshire and Rhode Island, they put these on pretty much every bridge over a road over. We don't have, I don't think, hardly any in the state. Maybe there's one down in Bennington, I think. So we put this up and we had a pub lot of public meetings. People were kind of upset in the beginning that what we were gonna put up, and even though we tell them it's only temporary, we have a project coming on, we're gonna do something a lot nicer than this. And, but I think it's helped a lot because you get to see this with this fence up, and even though it's just chain link, it's, a, it's green. I think I got a photo somewhere here, right here. This is when they were, this is from the inspection this last summer, but there's the fence. So it kind of blends in, and I think I told them at a public meeting, I think if, 
If this was your first visit to this bridge, not knowing that it hadn't been there, you would think it had always been there. So that's always a good, you know, something good to hear from people. And um, we got some positive comments after it was installed, contrary to what we got at the public meetings when we proposed the idea. So as far as the bridge preservation, uh, there's a lot of steel repairs to do. I have some pictures to show in a second. We're going to replace the sidewalks and part of the deck into the second stringer, I guess. There's some joints that need to be replaced. There's three joints at this bridge at each, at each end and at the, at the crown of the um, arch. Um, we're going to put new membrane and, and paving on the deck and clean and paint the steel. And um, the, the, the ledge at the east end is kind of shaly and it's coming loose and falling down and there's some pieces laying right on the structural steel. We're going to try to do something with that and we'll apply some silane to the substructures and all exposed concrete. And the safety improvements, we're going to move the vehicular railing from the fascia to the fascia curb, put up that safety fence at the fascia. Always sounds like a good idea until you, until you try to come up with a terminate, way to terminate it off the bridge. <laughs> so we have a, an option I'll show you here. Put up the pedestrian safety barrier. We're going to extend the sidewalks. There's no sidewalks off the bridge right now, so other than one short one on one side. So we're going to extend those to parking areas off the bridge. So it's going to be much, much more pedestrian friendly, which it should be. And of course, you know, we do a job like this. Uh, there's always a utility right where you don't want to see one. And that's going to be some challenges. We don't want to have to move that at all. We're looking at some options for some panels to, because we're going to pour an extension of that. The new deck is going to come out at least two and a half feet past that water line. So. So there's a view of the, there's a walkway underneath that goes all the way down to the bottom of to the river there, and there's a nice view off one side there. We had to put it as that you could look in the middle of the bridge, there's a panel there that's missing, and that was being uh, fabricated at the time. This is when they were constructing that. And we had to put a removable panel in there in case someone did, you know, unfortunately get over this. No one has since that's been up. So they can take the panel out and they have some equipment to get people down below. But there's a photo of the, of the ledge that's fallen off and laying on the, one of the bracing members. So we're going to try to we'll address that. But you have your typical you know, deterioration. Like I said, there's three, three joints up there. Of course, they're leaking. I think there's a few scuppers here, too, that have troughs that run into these joints and downspouts. So we'll try to clean some of that up and minimize that effect. But a lot of that brace, that bracing, I think, is going to have to be replaced. They've already gone in. I was looking at these photos. This is from an inspection in, in July here where the inspectors went out there. And we gave them a layout of the of identifying all the members and they did they took about 200 pictures and identified everything did a great job and it's really going to help us out but at one point someone's gone in and put some bolts and put a plate over that top of the top of that cord there you can see because there's bolts in there instead of rivets there's been work done on and off over the years the headers and the, the joints haven't held up that's probably that was from 88 so it seems like it should have held up better than that but there's a, a bearing at the abutment I don't think we have that standard anymore to put those back, so we'll come up with something. Try to do this in two seasons, including the painting. Haven't really nailed all that down yet. Um, that may be a bit aggressive, but we're going to try and maintain two-way traffic. There's quite a bit of traffic on this highway. This is Route 4. goes to Woodstock, which is a, a lot of vacation homes over there and uh, seasonal traffic. Generally try to get 24 feet to maintain uh, two lanes, but we're going to try and do it with 22. Shove everybody over and um, alternate it back and forth. We have to keep one sidewalk open. There's a lot of businesses there that are seasonal that rely on the, on the tourists and that type of thing. And we looked into a regional truck detour, um, but we have a whole bunch of other projects going on in the area. Um, once it's going out in 21 and 22, including a, a, a new project on the, on the I-89 bridge over the Connecticut River into New Hampshire. So instead of throwing traffic, into somebody else's project. We're going to try to keep the trucks here and, and see what happens. I'm sure they'll figure it out and find better ways around if the delays are too much, but it shouldn't be too bad. So that's what the bridge is going to look like when we get done. Um, a little wider, same curb to curb. Couldn't do much about that. Um, we're have, we have to beef up some of the co uh, portions of the arch by the spring line. So I think we've kind of, given what's out there, we've kind of maxed it out with this new dead load. All it's seen is new, new dead load getting added every time there's a project. So we're going to shift traffic uh, back and forth, do each side. So as far as suicide prevention, there's a couple different ways we could have gone. A lot of places around the country are going with a, a netting off underneath. We didn't want much to do with that. There's a whole litany of reasons why. Um, inspection, uh, maintenance of the netting. 
the netting that's used, it's, it's actually a steel cable netting, it's not fabricated in the United States, so it's foreign, it's foreign steel, so there goes a concern with federal funds and that type of thing. There's just, there was just too many issues. The people, there were a lot of proponents at the, from the area that wanted that because they didn't want to change the visual aspect from the highway. Over in uh, Ithaca, New York, there's several bridges over the gorge near Cornell, and they, they put the netting on those bridges. The Golden Gate Bridge is, has a project now to put the netting up. We decided to go with the, with the railing safety fence, and um, we met with the communities to go over what would be nice there. But here's the issue with the, uh, the vehicular barrier at the face of curb, and we'd like to use the one on the left, the short barrier. It's only 24 inches high off the sidewalk, but it's another 10 inches or 8 inches off the roadway. So there's some concerns that that is more of a tripping hazard for people on the sidewalk rather than the one with 34 inch, uh, which is more waist high. But I mean, that 24 inches to me is just above my knee. So, and with the wider sidewalk, we're going to try to get people to go along with that. I hope we can because I think it, it's less obvious when you're driving down the road. You don't, you're not going to notice that. It's going to do the job. And the termination off the end of the bridge is, is very short compared to the three rails. Both of those are, um, well, the one on the right is a standard that we have, and the short one is from um, Massachusetts. Gill Engineering out of Massachusetts is, is the design engineer on this working with us. So a lot of states have done some things with fencing. This is in um, Edmonton. So I showed, I showed all these at the public meetings to try to convince them that, you know, we could do a lot better than, than these. And not, you know, these probably worked for the area they were put in. This is in Toronto. And when I first saw this, I, I kind of wondered how, how anybody would, could come up with that. That was actually the winner of a design competition to simulate a, a harp. And at night, it, it gets all lit up. And it actually looks pretty nice. But a bridge in St. Paul, Minnesota, I'm not sure if it's been built yet, but that's what they're thinking of. There, I don't know, and I'll ask people, we can answer after, afterwards, if there's any, any, there's no guidance that I could find around that's available to provide for um, this type of a fencing um, for height or anything like that, other than the openings, the standard openings in a, in a bridge rail to prevent people from getting through. So these are the options that we sent, we brought down to the, to the town. The green, the green or black, they like the green, and we showed a vertical or one with a curved top or one with an angle top. And uh, that chain link fence we have out there now is nine foot four. We're gonna try and stay about that height because I think it's just, just imposing enough for people to be a detriment to try to get over it. And anything that curves back toward the sidewalk is just harder to, I mean, you've got to be somewhat agile to get up over that. I think they're going to go with the, with the, the curve, the view from the other way, the, the spacing. So from, from the handrail up, it's pretty much done. That's, uh, I think it's an eight inch spacing there. And, but from the handrail down, we're throwing it at the, at the town. And we have one more meeting in October to talk about what they'd like to see there. We threw something in there with some circles. People have, thrown, have requested something with an arch because of the arch bridge. Um, they have hot air balloon festivals in, over in Woodstock and Creechy, and someone mentioned, can we have a hot air balloon thing made and put in every span? And I said, well, we'll put it on the list, but I'm not sure how much further it's going to go. So I think that's, I think that's what we're going to end up with. And, and you can sort of see from that picture, the rail, the vehicular rail on the left is kind of doesn't show up. And everybody's worried about what this safety fence is going to look like. So. I hate that, you know, when you add in another railing that's three and a half feet tall or so, it's, it just clutters the whole area. So and here's one of the concerns. Um, when we put up the, the safety fence um, with, with, the, with the inspection, we, you know, we just bought a brand new server lift vehicle a couple of years ago for 800000 and um, this bridge was one of the reasons. It has 10 feet from, um, to get over anything with that horizontal arm, and so we have to kind of stay within that limit. Uh, but they had no, that was nine foot four out there. They had no problem getting anywhere, anywhere they needed to go um, with that. So that was kind of a good test before we designed something permanently. The estimate right now, it's we're only at preliminary plans. It's about um, eight and a half million. And as everyone here probably knows, when you do rehabilitation work, that number doesn't go down. We'll see how it goes. So thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.